It only took 17 conference games, but for the first time all season, I think Jerome Tang told the truth in his post-game press conference. K-State falls in Allen Fieldhouse 90-68 to tonight. It was competitive for the first little bit, and then the K-State team that liked to turn the ball over, liked to make a lot of dumb decisions, they showed up in full force, and they were eaten alive by a KU team that is wildly different at home, was fully healthy, and on senior night coming off of a loss, a couple of things that normally they just don't lose when those are things that are happening. But make no mistake about it, it's like what we talked about after the Cincinnati game where there is credit to be given to the teams that K-State has lost to this season. Like, K-State is not the sole reason why they have lost games, but they are the sole reason why they haven't had chances to win games and come through to win games because basically everything that happened tonight is what has led to narrow losses. Just they did it over an extended period tonight. So... That's what it was. Not a great night for K-State. And Jerome Tang, he called out the effort of his team after the game. And you knew that it was kind of going in that direction because one of the very first things that he said was, you know, coaching staff came up with a good game plan and did all these other things right. And so the second he said that, you, you knew what was coming. Like there was only one other faction of people that could take the fall for this, and it's the guys that deserved it. It was the players who – Lack of effort, lack of a lot of other things. And the number one culprit was Cam Carter. His funk continued. Tyler Perry had a bad night. Arthur Kaluma got off to a decent start, but then didn't really do anything after that. And he continued to miss free throws. So a disastrous night for K-State. Yeah, not a lot went right for K-State tonight. Uh, I mean, to, to be perfectly frank, like they, they were pretty competitive in the first half. And got off to probably one of the best starts that I can remember K-State having in Allen Fieldhouse. Got up 10-5 to and and played pretty decent in that first five minutes. But after that, it really spiraled. The game really got away the first five minutes of the second half where K-State struggled to make shots. KU was making shots. And that's kind of where – and that's the portion of the game where I think that Drum Tank kind of called out the effort because it, it really fell apart, and you could see that K-State was, again, back to wearing it when things aren't going well, that you can tell that it was a little front-runner-ish that some players kind of gave up. But I, I will say the one real bright spot tonight, if you want to take one from a 22-point loss in Allen Fieldhouse, K-State's freshman guards played really well, probably some of their best basketball of the season. Day-Day Ames was... Uh, showing flashes again of getting into the lane, knocked down a three. R.J. Jones has never seen a shot he doesn't like, but but for on a team like this, it's it's needed. And he hit three threes tonight. So if you're going to take something away, it's probably that the freshman guards weren't overwhelmed by this environment. I guess, yeah. It's a lot easier to do those things when you're down big and there's really not much point to it. I think Looking at what took place tonight, you know, after the game, Casey was asked about missing the free throws and Drum Tang and, the, and Kaluma and Perry, they kind of just blew it off like, yeah, you just miss shots sometimes. I think that there, that ties in, though, with the lack of effort thing tonight. I think there was a lack of focus at times for K-State. And when you don't pay attention to detail and you continuously make avoidable errors, one of the earliest indicators of that was Cam Carter with a lane violation on a free throw that Kevin McCuller missed. Like, that's just the little things that you can't do. It didn't impact this game tonight because K-State got their butts kicked. It was 22 on the scoreboard. It was worse than that. But you think about all the other games where K-State lost by two at Cincinnati, and they lost by three to TCU, and they lost by four to Oklahoma State, and they, all these close games, they lost by one to Texas Tech. That can be a big difference maker, and that's just stuff that is totally easy to avoid. K-State didn't do it tonight. Cam Carter, I mean – there, he should not have played as much as he did tonight. It was that bad, and I, it, I, I don't know. There's just no words for it, and I think we're going to have a tough time really quantifying it because this team played bad, and I've always said good teams win games. Bad teams will find ways to lose them. K-State is not a good team right now, and tonight they didn't even play to the level of which they had shown, which was we can compete with about anybody. They didn't want to be competitive tonight, and they decided it pretty early. So we'll see. I, this feels like a team that just there's nothing left for them to really play for, even as much as they try to tell themselves there is. And I don't know what we see from them against Iowa State on Saturday. 
Yeah, looking forward to Saturday. I, I'm with you 100%. I have no idea what to expect. And I kind of have played it off a little bit as a joke this season that I don't know what to expect going into a game. In a normal circumstance with K-State, I really don't know what to expect Saturday. Um, another thing that really just stands out of, uh, wow, it was really that bad tonight. Nick Timberlake ends up scoring more points than Tyler Perry, Cam Carter, and Arthur Kluma combined. It, it, if you got odds on that, what, what would be the lowest odds that would have made you entice of saying that that would happen tonight? I don't know. I, it's tough to say. I, I would not have guessed that in a million years just because there's three guys that can sometimes play basketball really well versus one guy that eh, has played basketball really well like 25% of the season, and that might be kind. But, yeah, it, it, was, it was that bad tonight for K-State to have Nick Timberlake outscore K-State's three best players by himself. Uh, I mean, I, I guess Will McNair played a pretty decent game on the stat sheet. But, it, again, like I said, there just wasn't a lot that went right or went well for K-State. So it, it's really hard to kind of quantify this besides at, at one point, I think we're going to see K-State win in Lawrence again in our lifetime. I just don't know when that's going to be. Yeah, I mean, that is that is tough to say. It's been 18 years, so uh, I don't know. There, there are kids that are students at K-State right now that haven't seen that happen, so we'll see. Uh, Look, it's it's a it's a mess right now with how things are, are working out for K State, and I guess we'll just kind of I don't know follow along and see what ends up coming up next for the Wildcats against Iowa State. A couple of things not related to this game because it's it's over. This team was terrible. No reason to worry about tonight. Uh, K State got some help in a weird way tonight. Oklahoma came back to win in overtime over Cincinnati. So if you're following along with Big 12 tournament scenarios, K-State has to win on Saturday against Iowa State or Cincinnati loses at home to West Virginia, uh, which would be highly unlikely. But if that happens, K-State doesn't have to play on loser day, which is Tuesday, where the 10 will play the 14 and the 12 will play, or the 11 will play the 14, the 12 will play the 13. We'll see how that ends up working out. Um, so that's, I guess, the one note and the one thing to hold on to. And I don't know that this team has – I know Jerome Tang can try and talk him up and say that there's still something to play for here. I just think you have a lot of guys on this team that they've, they haven't really focused a lot of the season. That's evident with the turnovers and other problems. And you have some other guys then that they're walking out the door after this season. Like, how engaged are they going to be without the, the carrot of the NCAA tournament there? So I think it could be a really gruesome finale to the season for K-State, uh, which is unfortunate because this is a team that, despite the record and the other issues, they've played better than that at times this year. But at the end of the day, you get what you deserve, and this K-State team is getting what they deserve. It, it goes back to what I pointed out earlier in the season where this K-State team has just kind of been a roller coaster where you will get the peaks of beating KU at home, beating Baylor at home, beating Villanova at home, and then you'll have the lows of not really being competitive at Houston, not being competitive at home against Oklahoma, not really being competitive an entire second half tonight, after, which is strange because they, they played okay. And I think that yeah. I, I think you go into halftime with three points from Cam Carter and two points from Tyler Perry, and you're only down eight, you're, you should be probably yeah. feeling good about yourself. That, that to me is the weird thing is, yes, they were down eight at halftime, which is insurmountable in Allen Fieldhouse most of the time. But they did it by – KU was dominant at the free throw line. They knocked down almost every shot they looked at there. But you were missing a ton of free throws, and like things weren't going your way because of your own problems – I feel like it would have been easy in that moment to get pumped up for it and get ready to go, but you just didn't see that fight from K-State. And that's kind of the deal with most of the season where uh, when there has been fight, it's come too late. And in some games, like the Oklahoma game, it's just not there at all. So we'll see what it looks like on Saturday against Iowa State. Senior day, I don't know. It, spring break starts, that could be a, a weak crowd. And I'm not going to be the guy that sits here and tells you that you should show up because – I, it's, it's tough to make the case to anybody that would need to buy a ticket and drive multiple hours to go watch this team because you don't know what you're going to get. And it's concerning when 
in the penultimate regular season game, the coach is calling out the effort. That's an issue. K-State has to get it fixed, and if not, it's going to be a pretty disgusting finish to this season for the Wildcats. So, for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online. Cats fall in Lawrence 90-68. to We'll be back tomorrow morning with some football talk over on the KSO YouTube page because I know nobody wants to hear about basketball anymore.